Hi, I'm Matt Hill. I'm a curriculum designer here at uh, MRU. This is a slides walkthrough video for our inflation unit plan day one. And so the idea of this is I'm going to walk through uh, the slides. So if you're a teacher or you know someone who's just learning econ on their own, this should give you an idea of what we were thinking um, on each of these slides. So this first lesson is really focused on thinking about money and specifically the purpose of money. And so we motivate this with a bell ringer that asks, all right, what do you think the most uh, important primitive invention is? So like go back to like, you know, early human history, like the most important tools, whatever that you might think were invented. So ask your students, all right, y'all, what do you think are the most important inventions? You may get something like fire. You may get something like the wheel. I don't know what else. Copper weapons, you know, whatever that a lever you know, let the conversation flow. Students may think it's this. Students may think, may, may think it's that. You're going to make the case, though. What about money? I mean, money is an invention. You know, it's not naturally uh, occurring. Societies had to come up with this idea of money. And students may scoff at this. They may think, oh, you know, money, it's whatever. It's, it's, it's a made up thing. Or I don't know, it's uh, the root of all evil, something like that. But Society after society has independently um, invented money in different um, forms. And that is because money solves a series of problems, just general, you know, everyday problems. If you're if you have a society, money is, you know, actually is very useful for solving three specific problems that we will go through. So the first problem is the double coincidence of once. Sometimes this is called the coincidence of once. Sometimes it's called the double. I don't know which one's act. I think they're both correct. Um, but this is an issue where if you have two people coming together to trade, but one person doesn't want what the other person has, an agreement really can't be um, made. You know, so if one person has sheep and one person has wheat, but say the wheat person doesn't want the sheep, you know, those two parties can't really come to um, an agreement unless there is money. Then if you're the sheep herder, you can trade your sheep to somebody who wants them, could be anybody, for money. And then you take the money, give it to the wheat person, and you have your wheat even if they don't want sheep. So in a barter, in like a typical barter economy, you know, basically every transaction the parties would have to want what the other person has. But money, with money, you don't need this. You basically get rid of, you know, you 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 get rid of this issue of the double coincidence of wants. And so money solves this this problem and this leads into its first primary function which is a medium of exchange. So the first function that money serves is that it provides a way for exchanges and trade uh, to happen between parties that don't necessarily have what the other person wants. But wait, there's even more uh, things that money uh, the money can help us with. The next issue is you may have some assets, um, you may have a lot of them um, that don't last, that are only good for a specific period of time. So of course, canonical example would be food of some kind food that goes bad. And so like, if you're really specializing in producing food, as you, you know, again, thinking back to more primitive societies, you know, have a lot of people who specialize in producing this or producing, you know, that. And so they may at what, at harvest time, they're going to get a lot of whatever the good is. And of course, more than they can um, consume themselves. So in this example, we're using cows. So like, if you have a bunch of cows or you, or you have a cow and you slaughter um, the cow, you're not going to eat, be able to eat the entire cow yourself, but it will go um, bad, but this is like your primary source of wealth. So one of your primary sources of wealth is this is, is livestock. And so without money, you'd be kind of stuck. You're like, all right, and you can't, you know, you can't like slaughter half your cow, um, at a time. But so what money does is really, you can sell the meat for money and money doesn't go bad. And essentially what you're doing there is like, it's a little bit of a time travel trick. You're essentially taking wealth from the present and transferring it to your future self. That's what you're doing when you're saving money. You're saying, I got this money now when you get your paycheck. You know, you don't spend it all that day, or at least most people don't. I mean, I do, but most people don't. You get your paycheck. 
you're basically that's your wealth in the, in the present and if you save it you're transferring it to your future self and when you borrow money basically you are borrowing from your future self so with money now we can move assets uh assets forward and backward um in time and so this is its second function store of value that basically money lets us move assets wealth around in time very powerful it's essentially time travel so you know our first function of money medium of exchange you know really facilitates all this trade second function of money time travel or store of value all right to use the official econ terminology very very powerful already two two great functions but yet there's more all right so let's say we want to know how much something is worth you know we have a dispute you know you like lebron james i like michael jordan i think the jordan rookie card's worth more of course, I'm right. Jordan's obviously better than LeBron. Um, and whatever the advanced stats say, they're wrong. Um, so how do we solve, you know, how do we how do we solve this dispute? Or how do we make comparisons between goods that are seemingly unrelated? How do you compare, you know, a boat to um, you know, I don't know, a table? You know, like how 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 you how do you compare these things? Well, with money, now we have prices. And prices facilitate those sorts of comparison. They facilitate comparisons between goods. They allow you to compare yourself over time. Okay, am I making more this year than last year? Or is this company making more profit this year than that year? So it really helps with these comparisons between goods or over time. And so the function it's really serving here is what's called a unit of account. It basically provides a common um, you know, measuring stick from which we can compare a bunch of different items. So those are the three functions of money. And it's, you know, really a wonderful piece of technology. And that's, you know, sort of the underlying lesson of this day is to think of money as a piece of technology. It's, you know, humanly devised and it makes our life easier. Like many pieces of technology, like a washing machine or an oven or, you know, something like that, a car, you know, it really, you know, it's a piece of technology that really makes the standard of living higher, makes our lives easier. And so money, by solving all these problems, really makes our life easier. I can go into a store. I could buy something. You know, I just bought lunch. I didn't have to worry. Oh, I hope the person that I'm buying this from needs something that I have. I mean, what do I have? An econ lecture? You know, no one's going to want that, right? Except for you. Thank you. Um, but I didn't have to worry about that. I just used the money. I don't have to worry about, you know, well, with inflation, we'll get to later, <laughs> later, later in this, later in this unit plan, you know, maybe the money is devaluing over time, but in general, you know, you can save your money, transferring your assets to the future. And also now we can easily compare um, goods, the unit of count, that third function. So, you know, you can make the case, I'll make the case that money is really the best piece of primitive technology, better than the wheel, maybe not better than fire because, you know, freezing is not great. But truly, an important uh, 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 important piece of um, technology. All right, so that's sort of the intro, um, the teaching part where you teach. All right, these are the functions of money. Hopefully, the students are asking you questions. Hopefully, they're understanding. Okay, these are the functions of money. We have a great interactive, super fun interactive, my personal favorite uh, interactive um, of this unit plan, um, where they're sort of they're going to go through the Jack and the Beanstalk story. And, you know, see the functions of money um, at play. And hopefully it really, you know, drives it home for um, the students. And just to end the lecture, really, you know, you want to, again, drive home this idea that, you know, money money really is just a piece of a technology. It has no, you know, uh, 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 intrinsic value. At least fiat money doesn't. And, you know, it's not really true wealth. Like you want to think about somebody's true wealth is their skills, their talents, their relationships, you know, obviously that's more valuable um, than money. And at the country level, level, you know, when a country has high GDP or like, you know, a lot about a lot of money, the economy is large, that's not about money. What it is about is what that country can produce, what the country can actually make. Um, you know, you think about wars, you know, this is, you know, one of the reasons world, uh, the US won World War II is, not because it had a lot of money, but because it could produce, um, you know, a lot of the things needed um, uh, uh, to win a war. Um, and so at the individual level, at the country level, you know, money is not true wealth. It's all about the individual skills and talents or the collective skills and talents of, um, of a country.
Okay, and we have an exit ticket um, to see what students know. Um, and that is day one. If you don't already have the unit plan, there is a link on screen. Or if you'd like to move to the next day, check out the next walkthrough video.